The Edge at 11 starts now. Tonight on The Edge, Detroit police are called to a horrific and tragic scene on the city's west side. Mm, that's where a young child is mauled to death by a dog that dug into his fenced-in yard. Fox News' Dave Spencer has more on this family's unthinkable loss. It happened around 3 o'clock Wednesday afternoon. Four-year-old Lavelle Anderson, seen here with his parents celebrating his second birthday, was playing in this fenced-in yard on Pearson near Chicago on Detroit's west side. Uh, the child was in his own backyard, mm -hmm. so pretty much doing what, it, what all kids do. The house belonged to Lavelle's grandmother. She was the only other person home at the time, according to police. While Lavelle was playing, it's believed a neighbor's dog got loose. My nephew were pulled under a backyard gate um, by a pit bull. The event was so horrific that people across the street could hear, and they were the one that contacted authorities right away. By the time first responders arrived, there was nothing they could do to save the child. It was full of life. Mm -hmm. Just such a gentleman. So helpful. Just sweet, gentle soul. Just, just sweet. We have chaplains here, we have our peer support team, and we're trying to do everything we can to assist the family with this just uh, an incredibly tragic event that occurred. Animal Control was called in to help locate the dog. We have two in custody right now, um, but the one dog that we that was identified as a as the possible dog, sure. um, that was a that was a pit. But both dogs were pit bulls. One dog, according to the family, belonged to the grandmother. The other was thought to belong to a neighbor who lives a block away. No one in this family is familiar with that dog. All this could have been prevented if the dog was tied up or even inside of a gate. In their anger and sadness, the family feels someone should be held accountable. It has to be settled in court because this is very sad. You know, this, this is a case that can't keep happening. Hopefully we'll be able to bring some kind of closure to the family once we obtain that justice. Now, police tell me they do not have anyone in custody and are not currently looking for anyone, but they also stress this is very much an active and open investigation. In Detroit, Dave Spencer on The Edge. Also tonight, Detroit police have not been shy about it. If you're riding an illegal motorbike or ATV on city streets, they're coming for you. In fact, this year they teamed up with Homeland Security to really go after these riders who terrorize some neighbors. And it turns out to be a pretty successful operation. Fox News' Jessica Dupnak has more on how officers tackled this from the ground and the sky. He rides in the street, through a field, on a bridge. Story writes like a Dr. Seuss book, but this is not child's play. From cruising to cuffs. It's a bad day for you. Okay, sorry, I only want to talk to my clothes. Okay, just tell me why you're going to jail and stuff. Okay, cool. The 21 year old thought he'd get away with it, taunting police on his super not street legal dirt bike on Detroit's west side. Then the wheelies come, then the speed. I, I believe he actually wanted to be chased. Like, I wonder if this officer is going to light me up and chase me. Problem is, this was no officer. It's a Detroit police commander decided to join his crew in the field on a special operation targeting stolen vehicles. <laughs> And drivers like these last week. It's a great position to be put in to be like, hmm, I got something for you today. And that something is the eye in the sky provided by Homeland Security, a helicopter that tracked this driver all the way to his Highland Park hideout. You all have fun? I had a great time. You relax, it, it's funny watching people drive like complete morons, not knowing there's a helicopter. When Detroit Police Commander Eric Decker stopped him on Detroit's West side, it appeared the driver knew they wouldn't chase for a lower level crime because of safety. What he did not know is they had the helicopter in stealth mode to follow from above. Decker says he egged cops on as they tried to pull him over. Then he was off and running. You can watch as he dumps the dirt bike in the back of a unit at Highland Manor Apartments and runs in another for cover. Probably thinks he got away with it. All right. Um, I don't know if it's in gear now. But he didn't. Officers got there and minutes with the direction of those pilots. Was it fun? Yeah. Are you on probation or parole? Nope. That's Decker behind the body worn camera as the driver eventually surrenders to police still with a smirk. You're speeding, you're doing wheelies, just reckless as heck. You drive 
really crazy. I'm glad that you're not hurt. Since 2020, 21 people have died riding ATVs, mini bikes, or dirt bikes in Detroit, and another 36 critically injured. This person's mom was there. I said, hey, lucky your kid's here because he's driving like a complete idiot, mm -hmm. uh, probably 85 miles per hour down Finkel in traffic. Commander Decker says the city streets have become a playground for some and these operations are starting to put a dent in that. Now you're going to jail with the likelihood of going to prison. It appears the result of an errant rocket fired by a terrorist group in Gaza. The United States unequivocally stands for the protection of civilian life during conflict. President Biden in Israel. During this historic visit, the president backed up claims Israel is not responsible for Tuesday's deadly airstrike on a Gaza hospital, based on information from the Defense Department. Israel also released video, audio, and other information they say shows it was a missile misfire carried out by Islamic Jihad. The errant rocket claimed more than 500 lives. The incident sparked protests across the Middle East, escalating tensions. Pro-Palestinian rallies were held across the U.S. and here in Metro Detroit. A couple hundred people waved the Palestinian flag at the corner of Orchard Lake and 14 Mile in West Bloomfield. Members of the local Jewish community held a similar rally one week ago. Meanwhile, about 1,000 people gathered in Dearborn this evening to take part in a silent march. Fox News' Dave Kinchin has more on the message from today's event. Nearly two weeks of war in Gaza and people on both sides of the conflict in our area continue to take their passions to the streets. From downtown Detroit to the heart of Dearborn, activists pound the pavement with thousands of flags of Palestine in hand, demanding an end to the latest war in the Middle East. We caught up with some of the demonstrators as they made their way around Dearborn. Our message here is that we are standing up for our people, standing up for our people in Gaza all the way to America. It's like very painful to see that my people are dying. Um, innocent lives are being taken away this very second. Every single day you're gonna find like tragic news about people that are dead. There's calls for a ceasefire, your take on, on that? Well, I wish the president would call for a ceasefire. I wish the president would call for a ceasefire. Instead, the president instead the, instead the president tells them to do whatever they want to do. And local folks on both sides of the Israel-Hamas war have held rallies periodically across the region since the war began. In Dearborn, Dave Kinchin on the Edge. A major joint venture in the healthcare field to tell you about tonight. Henry Ford Health and Ascension Michigan plan to join forces. They've signed an agreement to the merger would be branded Henry Ford Health with headquarters in Detroit. Combined, the organization would have about 50,000 employees at more than 550 locations. The agreement includes eight Ascension hospitals and assets like Health Alliance Plan or HAP will be included in the partnership. I hope you saw it. it made a brief appearance today, but it made all the difference in the world. You saw that big orange ball of joy in the sky. We're talking about the sun. <laughs> and uh, too bad it's gone back into hiding, though. Yeah. But we'll see it again soon, right, Rich? The sun will come out, not tomorrow, but maybe later this week. Uh, Don't Sunday. Say. Sunday, the sun's going to come back <laughs> out. Uh, but it was glorious this afternoon. Pushed our daytime highs into the lower 60s. Here's our next low pressure area spinning over the western Great Lakes. It's going to move slowly across our region for tomorrow and for Friday with scattered to occasional showers. You can see where all the wet weather is right now out over Lake Michigan, around Chicago, all the way up close to Traverse City. In fact, we have some live pictures from Traverse City right now. You can see some wet roadways up there. Temperatures are holding in the mid 50s. Take a look at these daytime highs today with breaks of sunshine. We hit 63. Look at Mount Pleasant, Traverse City, both at 66 this afternoon, closer to 70 out there around Green Bay and Milwaukee. So 63, 41. You're Official high and low today. If you add them all up, it's right where we should be for this time of year. Look at the records 85, make it 84 on the high side, 24, 24 degrees back in 1976. Right now, most of this in the mid range of the 50s. There's that breeze, pretty light from the south and southeast. It's going to keep us relatively mild for tonight and again tomorrow. Yes, it's the middle of October and yes, there's a lot of green on the map, but really 55 is not all that bad. 62 Chicago, 52 to our south in Columbus. So here's our next low pressure area slowly crawling across the region tomorrow and Friday so that's why occasional showers
in the forecast. It turns cooler on the backside. That'll kick in for Friday night and for Saturday. For the rest of tonight, pretty quiet. Not as cool as the last couple of nights, so we'll bottom out at 50 degrees. Tomorrow, back close to 60, even with the clouds and a breeze. Occasional showers, mostly in the afternoon and evening. And then right there is the seven-day forecast. Temperatures will fall off for the weekend, and it will be chilly inside Spartan Stadium for the big football game. Notice 50 degrees on Sunday. Roop and Taren, a full check at 4 a.m. Thanks, Rich. Well, over a month on the picket line is really starting to take its toll. Striking workers telling Fox 2 morale is actually down. On day 34 of the strike, UAW members are getting tired of walking the picket line and they're getting tired of living off 500 bucks a week in strike pay. We're told workers are waiting for a deal on EV battery production. Some picketers we spoke to calling on UAW President Sean Fain to get them back to work. Nobody wants to do this. We're all going financially bankrupt. You know, we weren't even getting a full 40 hours a week since like May. And now to be handed $500 a week before taxes, it's killing us. Experts watching the strike say it's only amplified the shortage of mid-sized trucks like the Ford Ranger and Chevy Colorado.